Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how to detect if a website is down. Obviously many of us are dependent on a variety of websites to help us stay connected to our digital lives. The challenge is, is that when you encounter a situation where you're dealing with a website that you can't access, it can be challenging to figure out where the problem is. Is it your internet provider? Is it your router? Is it your computer or other mobile device? The list is endless and unfortunately when you call your internet provider or even your IT company, they really can't give you a clear answer as to why you can't access certain websites. So that's why I'm here to help you with some tips in order to help you identify if the problem is with your computer, your router, or with your internet service. So let's jump in and take a look at some of the things that you can do in order to find out if a website is down or not. Now, on a Windows computer, one of the things that you can do is to use an old MS-DOS command called ping. And what ping does is it allows you to find out if you are able to reach a specific website. Now, this tool isn't foolproof because ping doesn't work on all websites and it may give you some or misinformation. So let's switch to our desktop and let's bring up ping, which you would find from the command prompt if you just go to Windows Search on a Windows 10 or 11 computer and then click on command prompt. Now to make this work, you would neither need to know the IP address of the website or just the URL. So we're gonna say that we're having issues going with Google, or not Google, Yahoo. So we're gonna ping yahoo.com and hit enter. Now what it does is it gives us the IP address of Yahoo and it lets us know if it was able to reach the website. Now it, it normally does it in packets or information sent from the website to see if the website received it. If things are good, you wanna look at, it was able to send out sent or sent items for, received for, and zero packet loss, which means that the information that was sent to Yahoo was concise, the website's up and running, and you're not going to have any problems. Now, looking at another site, we can try to do a ping, and again, that's this tech speak for sending information to a public website. So we're gonna do MSN this time. Hit enter, and there's the IP address that it tried to connect, and as you can see, it has since sent four packets, the website received all four, and there was zero lost. So a quick and easy way to check and see if a website is available for you to access. Now, let's say that you don't want to type in a DOS command and you want to find other ways of making it happen. Now, if you are a Firefox user and you're having problems with Firefox, then what you could do is, and let's open this up. We're in Firefox. Let's say I can't get to a specific website. I've entered in the address. I've done a search with Google but I can't get to that web address. What you wanna do is to think outside the box and use another browser. So it's always a good idea to have more than one web browser on your computer. If you're a Windows user, you're probably gonna have a combination of Microsoft Edge and either Chrome or Firefox or Brave. If you're a Macintosh user, it's gonna be Safari or Chrome or Firefox on your computer. Now, not that you really need to so, show this, but if you go to Firefox, you're like, I can't get anywhere. Then you would open up another browser 
like let's say opera which has got some wonderful noises but opera is on the wrong screen so let's bring opera over we open up opera we try to go to the same website and if i'm able to go to opera or if i open up brave the browser and let's see here i don't care that it's not the default let's just go back to the home page for brave i think it's just brave hit enter or let's go back to brave so let's skip and then we can import let's skip that and then we don't want to do this but in short you've got another browser that you can go to visit the same website and verify that the website is accessible from another browser now another tool that you can use let's say that you think that there's issues with your internet many of you are probably going to be quick to call your internet service provider and find out if there are issues on their end let's say you've already gone through and you've done the control alt delete You've rebooted your computer and you've rebooted your router and your modem. One of the things that you can do is if I spell this website right, is that you can go to speedtest.net to see if you actually have internet. Now, one of the good things about speedtest.net is that if we switch to it, not all, it will show your internet provider letting you know that you are connected to the right source once you go to speedtest.net and click go it will verify what speeds you are connecting to the internet and one of the most important things you need to know is what internet speed are you supposed to be pulling with your internet now with me being connected wirelessly i'm not pulling the top speeds that i would be with google but at least it's giving me internet speeds that are good enough for me to surf the web. Now, speed test will check your download and your upload speeds, ensuring that you have decent speeds. Now, depending on your provider, you could either be pulling speeds that are between 80 and 100, sometimes between 20 and 50, but the main thing is, is that you're not pulling speeds that are below 20 or even 10 megabits per second because that could be why your website is not coming up. Now let's say that you've checked everything as far as your browser is concerned. You switched browsers, you've gone to different websites with your browser, but now everything appears to be working except that website that you want to access. Now there are several tools that you can use to check to see if your internet or your web page is the problem. So let's take a look at some of these tools that are out there. Now, first on our list is a thousand eyes or a thousand eyes.com forward slash outages. What you will see on applications on the left hand side are services that are currently being affected. As of the time of this video, Monday.com is having some issues as well as Netflix is having some issues. You can also click on the lower section here. It'll show you some servers that may be down, like maybe Dropbox or Azure. We go further. The website Twitch or ServiceNow are having issues, which could explain why you're not able to access it. So it's gone through the applications as far as websites are concerned. Now, Let's go over to the right hand side and you can see what services or networks are being affected. According to this, it's 28 at the time. So there's AT&T, I can't even get it to go. Janet, Microsoft, Prolexic, Tata Communications, and the list goes on and on because it's flipping through sites. Now for most people, you're gonna be over in the application side for a thousand eyes. More advanced like Cox Communication, that could be an internet service provider. So as the old adage says, when you call your internet company, you may be experiencing an outage or we are experiencing an outage in specific areas. 
That's what the networks is for. Now, moving on, another website that you can go to is called Down for Everybody or Just Me. Let's go ahead and switch to that site. And then Down for Everyone or Just Me.com is the website. You can, well, ignore the ad from Squarespace as far as building a website. But then you can just answer the question is Twitter down for everyone or just me? Once you fill that out, it fills out and says, no, Twitter currently isn't having any problem. If you go back in the browser, you can repeat the question. Is Apple down for everyone or just me? And then it lets you know immediately if there are any problems. Now also, if it looks for a specific website, it will always let you know what may be down or recent outages. So Midjourney was down about eight hours ago. So was Warzone and Steam. So those sites have been down and you can quickly access that and find out if you're having an outage with the particular website that you're using. Next is, is it down right now? Dot com. So again, you can put in a website. Don't even have to fill out the full URL. You can click on check. And what it'll do is let you know the website history, what's going on with Facebook. Even tells you when it was down last, how quickly the response is, and verifying the URL. Now you can also leave ratings. And I guess I need to go back because you guys aren't seeing what I'm seeing. Let's try that again. Let's go back. Let's go to, is it down right now? You can check it. And then it's checking the status of Facebook and it lets you know what the response time is. When was it down? When the URL or the URL that you checked to verify you put the information in, you can even rate it. And it gives you a little history of what's going on with Facebook, which is pretty handy. So what this does, these websites, they monitor what's going on. And that way you can check them without worrying if it's the internet browser or is it me or is my internet out? In fact, you probably want to go to one of these tools or even do a ping before you start calling your internet service provider that there's a problem. Now, finally, the last one we're going to check out as far as websites detector or down detectors is actually Ookla, the same people who brought speed test in their down detector. So what you can do, we tell you when your favorite services are down or having problems. So you can quickly put in, let's say that you can't figure out or know the URL for a site. So if you don't know, you can either A, use the magnifying glass, find out the site that you want to look at, spill in the will of mouse fortune and find out. So let's say we're having issues with, oh, we'll go ahead and do GTA 5. We click on it, no problems with GTA 5. And you can scroll through most reported problems with either the website or the server connection. And then there's a live outage and reported problems map. So if you're in an area, you can quickly find out if it's for you. Then also, Down Detector has an app that you can download for either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Now, one more thing I wanted to show with Down Detector is that you can look at popular websites on Down Detector to find out if there are issues. So rather than doing a search, you can just scroll through the list on Down Detector, find out if the actual website is up or there is a problem. Now, obviously searching for it is quicker but popular websites show up in Down Detector, making it easy for you to find out if that website is up or to find out if it's down. Now, if you have any comments or questions as far as checking to find out if either your internet's down or your website's down, leave them in the comments section below. Now, I know some smarty pants is going to say, well, if I'm down, how can I even see this video or talk to you? This is for in those instances where you're favorite website is not accessible and then you can 
um, utilize this video to find out why that may be. Now with every video, my goal is to help you get most from the technology that you use at home and at work. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, share it, and comment on it. That way, your friends and family members who struggle with technology know where to go as far as a resource to fi help find someone who can help them out. Now, with every video, my goal, again, is to make sure you're getting the most out of your internet. But I'm going to add, I love technology. I've read all the manuals, and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching.